Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay and I'm a tutor here at CHAG. Today I'm going to discuss with you psychodynamic theory. Psychodynamic theory was actually created by Sigmund Freud and he's actually known as the father of psychology for this reason. Sigmund Freud developed this theory because he created a few main assumptions and those assumptions were that our unconscious motives and desires actually shape a lot of the actions that we do in our everyday life. Another um, main assumption that he had was that our childhood experiences actually help form it, make us into the person that we are today. And that can be both good and bad experiences. Um, so from this theory, Sigmund Freud created psychoanalysis. And that is a method where you have your clients sit down and you just discuss with them things that have happened in their life. You often just sit there while they freely discuss everything that they've gone through in their lifetime and hope that the client will release some information that they may have not thought of themselves. For example, the client may say, one time when I was younger, I got in this bad car accident because my mom had been drinking. And then they may not realize that they still have guilt against their mother for this reason. So that's why oftentimes psychoanalysis is still used today. Um, so Sigmund Freud really feels that there's three different levels of thinking that we have, and that is our conscience, preconscious, and unconscious. And our conscience is the information that a person is paying attention to. For example, if I'm feeling hungry, I pay attention to that and I often will go get food. The unconscious is things that we keep in our mind that we should know and that we need to know, but that we don't think of all the time. For example, our home address, our car, where we go to school, things that if people were to ask us information about it would be able to relay that, but that we don't have to think about otherwise. Um, the third one is our unconscious. And that's the thoughts, feelings, and desires that we have no awareness of, but that affect us in several ways. For example, that I was like I was discussing with the girl. Every, that car accident has had an effect on her every point in her life, but she hasn't realized that's the reason. So that's often why psychoanalysis is used. Um, off of that, Freud created the id, the ego, and the superego. And this is what he believes help are the motives behind what we do in everyday life. Um, in his mind, the id is our unconscious thoughts and, and energy that contain pleasure-seeking motives that revolve around biology. And this is only um, part that's present since birth, actually. And that is actually the drive that we have to survive, the drive we have for sex, and the drive we have for things such as anger. And that is based off of biology. For example, the sex is to repopulate. And it's our primary conscience thinking, which means that it's logical and rational. And then the second one is the ego. And the ego can be both unconscious, preconscious, and conscience. So we can think about it, but we can also have it in the back of our mind and not realize that we are thinking about it. Um, and that's actually what's responsible for helping the individual deal with reality. And it's our secondary conscience thinking. So it's logical and rational. Uh, the third one is the superego, and it actually contains all the morals that we have learned from society and from our parents, from any figure that's really taught us anything. And the superego can be both unconscious, preconscious, and conscious, and it actually causes people to feel guilty. So the it is what have, makes us want to go out and buy that red sport car. But the superego is what, after we buy it, is like, mm, maybe we shouldn't have done that. And the superego is kind of what holds us all together because that's really saying that you can have, go out and you can have some pleasure, but you also have to keep in mind your budget and what you have going on in your life at that current time. To better explain this, I put together um, an iceberg. It's, off, it's used oftentimes when discussing Freud's theory. And it's discussed, see here, we have it separated by our unconscious, preconscious, and conscious thoughts. And in our unconscious, we have the superego and we have the id. That's things that we don't realize is going on in the back of our minds, but that's controlling all of our actions. And then in our preconscious thoughts, the superego is still in the preconscious, but so is the ego. And then in our conscious thoughts, we have our ego and we have our superego. 
And the super ego actually evolves around age five, and it's the latest ego to evolve. So that's why children until age five have a hard time understanding when they get in trouble what they're doing. Um, another part of Ford's theory is the psychosexual stages of development. And there's actually five stages, and they kind of vary based on the person that um, goes off of Freud's ideas. So I just kind of put the basics because sometimes they change based on the publisher. Um, so the first one is the oral stage, and that's actually birth to 12 months, and that's our source of pleasure. It's biting, chewing, sucking. And during that stage is really when you try to get wean children off of breastfeeding because if a child gets obsessed with that, there can be problems. Um, and the second stage is anal, and that's ages two to three. And the source of the pleasure is actually the anus. And that's when children learn to potty train, and that's where that comes from. They finally learn the pleasure of relieving themselves. And a result of fixation on this can actually be that the child becomes over-controlling or has an easy, angered personality, or other psychologists believe that it can cause them to be neat freaks. Things like that. Um, in the phallic stage, that's ages 3 to 5, and the source of pleasure is the genitals. And that's actually when kids start to discover that their genitals vary from the person of another sex. And that's where they oftentimes can want that genital of another sex. Or it's oftentimes where they um, start to have an obsession with their mom or their dad because based on their gender. So if they're a daughter, they often have an obsession with their father. And if they're son, they often have an obsession with their mother because of the fact that it's someone of the other sex. Um, in the Latin East stage, Latin East stage, that's six years to puberty. And that is actually when we have dormant feelings of pleasure, but that we focus on succeeding in school and creating friends in school and having peer groups instead of trying to have some source of pleasure sexually. Um, and then a genital stage is puberty to adulthood and that's when we start to find people, that's when our source of pleasure is genitals based around having sex, doing things like that, and that's when we try to find someone, um, a mate or someone that we want to marry. That's where our most intimate relationships are formed. And problems in any of these stages can cause a lot of um, backlash. For example, um, in the latency, latency stage, if a child doesn't create friends, it can cause the child to have certain characteristics later on in life. However, those characteristics do vary based on the psychologist that has researched it, so I didn't want to put in any because they were so different. Um, so that's really everything that is based around psychodynamic theory, and I hope you learned a lot, and thank you.